How much did Santa pay for his sleigh? Nothing. Are you going to... What's <laughs> happening? I'm all right. What's up? Will you shut up? Let's speed it up. How much did Santa pay for his sleigh? Nothing. Oh, it's on the house. <laughs> oh, we're recording. Get me every time. All right. Hello. And as you can see from the Festus themed uh, ornaments that are surrounding me, i.e. the tree and this beautiful uh, sparkly reindeer, this is a special Christmas edition unboxing. And the reason is because Christmas is only four weeks. That's 28 days, people. Yeah. <laughs> Away. So I thought we'd have a Christmas themed one. Now, enough with the silly hat, because it's ridiculous and I can't concentrate whilst I'm wearing it. So I'm going to take that off first. Yeah, that's better, isn't it? So anyway, this is really exciting today because uh, my wife, Julie, has gone to all this trouble to wrap each individual parcel in Christmas paper. And it actually feels like I'm sitting in Santa's grotto right now. Well, no, it feels like Santa's <laughs> called by today when I was out. And he's left all these parcels. So anyway, the first one here is from Mark Brown in Brooklyn, which is in Michigan, which is M-I, and it's in the USA. Michigan. What? Michigan, yeah. Michigan. What's about It doesn't matter. <laughs> no, it does. <laughs> it's from Brooklyn in Michigan, <laughs> from the USA. So I should be opening this one first. And I don't think I'm going to need a knife because, as is always, you can just rip Christmas packages open like this with your bare hands. It's addressed to Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Have I got a knife? <laughs> what? We had this planned meticulously. Where's the knife? All right, here we go. A nice little package. Haha, <laughs> I've heard that before now. I wanted to preserve that box. There's no choice. I have to destroy it. Oh! Well, this looks interesting. What is this stuff here? What is this? It's in a sandwich bag and there's a few bits and bobs in here. So it's quite, it's like a stocking filler. There's a patch there of some Looney Tune character or something, which will all be explained, I'm sure, in, well, there's letter, letter, letter. There's three letters. This may not be the first letter, but I'm reading it anyway. Marty, your shows never fail to entertain. Sending you a trinket from my Christmas tree decorations. How appropriate. Not a matchbox, but seemed lonely tucked away all year. A wasp patch from the women's air service pilots that ferried the heavy bombers. Is that what that is? And the like during wartime. Walt Disney's employees design. Brooklyn, Michigan is a small town between Detroit and Chicago and they built a NASCAR speedway that fills the town with race fans, a show in itself. Give thanks to your cameraman since all we hear is some laughter as someday he'll realise it was his best job he will ever have. <laughs> your fan, Mark Brown. Well, thank you, Mark. Well, the wasp thing, the patch here, it doesn't really look very waspy to me. There's Maybe it's not, maybe it's in there, no? Or maybe it's in here. But <laughs> if that's the wasp thing, it's not very waspy. A wasp patch from the women's air service pilots. It's got like angel wings on it. <laughs> no black and white stripes and no sting in the tail. However, all will be revealed. Let me, before I pass comment, let me continue and open this one because maybe this is where the, the wasp patch is. <laughs> Right, what's this? Standing proud at the owner's home. What is this thing? It's a motorcycle frame. And it's a motorcycle. One, two, three, four photographs. Okay, let's have a look here. First of all, there's some NASCAR uh, stickers to advertise the NASCAR Summer Fest. Summer Fast! <laughs> Play on words. And uh, what's this one here? This is free tickets. No, it's not. It's the come and stay early in Detroit. Trip begins in Michigan. Pure Michigan. It's a Michigan 
themed package. <laughs> Hang on. Can I just read this letter first before I show you these photographs? Photos of a motorbike makeover I did for a friend. It's a 1974 Laverda 1000 SSS. Sat for 30 years disassembled with a broken starter gear. I raced to caddies and tuned his in the past. One day I asked if he, he asked if I would fix the Laverda. It took nine weeks to finish and we were all happy with that. When I see your cracked painted fingers, I remember how mine looked. <laughs> Alright, let's look at these pictures here. This is the first one. Oh, it's in the back of a trailer by the looks like, on his way home. And he's pulled up and it says on the back of it, starting point. Now the second one here is a black frame in somebody's garden. Nice grass by the way. And it says, a coat of black after primer. Oh, a, co a coat of black after the primer. Now, picture number three is a paid helper. No chips in the paint. Oh, my shed. Oh, nice, nice toolboxes you got there. Wow, I wish I had a shed like that. And here is number picture four. Number picture four. Standing proud at the owner's home. And there it is. It's been, how long was it sitting there for? Was it nine years? No, it took nine weeks. 30 years! And it took nine weeks to fix. Look at that. Done a good job on that. I bet it sounds beautiful. So there we go. All right, let's have a look here. There's another letter. <laughs> I dropped it. <gasps> oh, this looks like another one of those special ones, which is going to go with the other special ones, which are up there. It's Evil Knievel rocket car. Can't be, is it? Is it a matchbox? <laughs> this is from the Snake River Canyon Jump, brackets flight. Evil Knievel, remember him, wasn't he crazy? So that's a nice little model. Look at the little details in that. Evil Knievel X2. It's got a cockpit, little steering wheel in there, tricycle undercarriage. I don't know if it's a matchbox though, is it? It's a cute little vehicle. I'll show you a close up of that. It's a beauty. And I, I like it a lot. <laughs> right, first up, I need to apologize. There's a little bit of inconsistencies in this video because my memory card just filled up and stopped recording. So we're going to reboot this package. Sorry it's read it already missing its Christmas paper. I'm going to start reading this letter again. This parcel has been sent from the USA. Uh, Mike and Nikki Pumphrey from Westminster in Maryland. Dear Marty, we hope this package finds you well. It's always going to be a good day when we open YouTube to find a new video from you. We really enjoy watching both your unboxing videos. I've done more than two. <laughs> as well as your makeovers. It's great seeing children's treasured playthings brought back to life and loved once more. We've enclosed two matchbox that we picked up on our latest treasure hunt at the local antique store. We both still have many of our matchboxes and hot wheels from our youth in the 70s and 80s. Unfortunately, very few are the early Lesney types that you prefer. We're crossing our fingers, hoping that you don't, don't already have these or that you unbox some before getting to our package. All the best to you and your family and of course, Kevin from Mike and Nikki Humphrey. Well, Mike and Nikki, it's time to delve in and see what these Matchbox cars are all about. It's like opening a packet of fish and chips. Mm. Aha, a hovering ham. This is in good condition, actually. The hovering ham truck, tipper truck, with the tailgate that opens and closes. Now, this is the number 17. And yes, that's what they call it, the Hoveringham Tipper. And I don't have one in such good condition as that. That's in really good nick. And uh, that's almost good enough to put straight on the shelf, in my, by my reckoning. So thank you. I think I do have one more, and it's a bit wrecked, more wrecked than that. Oh, I do like these Unimogs. These come up lovely. Time for another Unimog uh, do up. <laughs> Resto. These only came out in two colours, to my knowledge. I would really like to do a custom and make uh, like an army green one. So I might. That's it. Once again, if I clean them up, those two are worthy of going straight on the shelf. So quite the dilemma there. Do I do a custom or do I not? Time will tell. So thank you, Mike and Nikki. Most welcome and perfect for what I'm looking for. I do like them. Next one today, the nice next Christmas package, 
in this lovely pink, non-generic pink. This is from Mrs. Marsha Riggs in Sumpter in South Carolina, USA. Sumpter, I've never heard of that. I must look it up on the map after. Uh, so let's have a look. Thank you, Marsha. I've been spoiled this Christmas. Look at all these prezzies I've got. Oh. oh, hang on. Lift here to open. Okay. <laughs> I need a cutting board. Please don't send me any cutting boards. <laughs> I don't need a cutting board. <laughs> Wow, look at these. These tiny little micro machines. I haven't seen these for a while. <sighs> Just like to lay that out there, look, for you to see and admire. What have we got here? It's a hundred dollar note. I've never seen one of those before. Yes, you can send me a hundred dollar note. <laughs> no, this is a great idea. Look at that. It's a picture of Canada with South Carolina, and she's even included a pin a white one, and she's shown me where to put it, which is a brilliant idea. Look at that. I'll never have to Google it anymore. Now, let me see. I'll read this short note before I have a look at these bits and bobs here. Dear Marty, I'm always quite entertained. Oh, there's a picture of a little cat. I better say cat because I'm not allowed to say <laughs> anymore. There's a little picture of a cat there. <laughs> and it says meow, so that's probably code to Morty, it probably means something. Dear Marty, I'm always quite entertained by your videos, not only by your hilarious antics, but, but what? <laughs> They're serious, what are you talking about? Uh, by, but by your expertise in, what's up with my accent? I'm having a brain aneurysm. But in your expertise in making over all of your chosen projects, enclosed, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm losing the power of speech, it closed, if I drop dead, please ring triple O. Enclosed, please, actually don't even bother if I'm dead. <laughs> ring the undertaker. Enclosed, please find two grindstone attachments along with two bit holders I made. I use these at my work and they come in handy for storage and selection. Included is the map with pin in case you're running low. There was also a collection, yeah, thanks, one, one will come in <laughs> really handy. <laughs> Are you sure you can spare it? <laughs> uh, I'm not ungrateful. It's just, you know, the bit of banter there, just to sort of make it entertaining. There was also a collection of miniatures I found. Hope you will enjoy. Kind regards, Marsha Riggs from South Georgia. Well, let's have a look at these miniatures. They are indeed, I believe, micro machines, and they're cute as cute can be. And Kevin is going to love playing with these because they're about claw size for him. I'll just shifty through them. There's like a little jeep there. Uh, a quarry truck. Look at that. They're cute as. Are they micro machines? Normally, I can't read the font on the bottom of a matchbox car. These ones I need a microscope for. I don't happen to have a microscope handy at the moment. That's a digger, but the digger attachment's missing. That's a bit, a bit of a shame. I do like the quad bike. It's got a crazy, crazy rider on it. It's another ute. What's this one here? It's a, like a cattle truck. Uh, oh, some racing cars. Oh, Hot Wheels. We're, we're Micro Machines Hot Wheels. It's definitely Hot Wheels. It says so on the bonnet there. Have a look at these. They're cute as. And there's a truck with a tilting cab which reveals the engine. It's a nice little detail for such a small model. And here is a Dupont... Uh, racing car looks like it's out of that movie cars you know the cartoon movie so that's great they're cute and like i say kevin wow he's going to be over the moon when he sees those <laughs> where did he go i think he, he said something about he heard some hooves on the roof and he's gone up to investigate you know right so oh these are handy dremels i, I do like these because what i've got, only got two of these and they're both worn out practically so those will definitely go into stock and be used in the near future. So that's very thoughtful of you. And what are these things here again? They are, are these 3D printed? No, they're glued together or something. 
a bit holder. So I bet you these, I'll just do a quick demo. Wow, look at that. What a brilliant idea. Why didn't I think of that? That's great. I love that. I'm going to mount those on like a stand and put them in my hobby room near my toolbox. That's tool board, I mean, tool board. That's going to be brilliant. So thank you very much. Very thoughtful. And the pin is a nice touch. I like that. Marsha Riggs. Okay, fourth Christmas package today is this one that came down the chimney. Quite apt, really. It's just the right size. Something heavy in here. And it's from Colin Patterson from Hayes in the UK. I can't see in it. I've got to open it up. Why am I pretending it's a telescope? I don't know. Why am I talking to myself? All will be revealed. Open this end. Okay. Oh, I think I know what it is. It's some pins. There's a pin. Okay, that's empty. Oh, it's a map of England. A map of the United Kingdom. Look at that. Beautiful Union Jack there. This is a great idea because if I just zoom in up to the map there, you can see that England is absolutely chock-a-block full of pins. And therefore, I'm going to have to frame this now. Oh, there's some more pins there. Wow, there's a whole load of them. There's a hundred pins. And uh, there's something else here, which I need to read. That's a beautiful map. I love it. I'm going to have to frame it and start using that from now on because I can't fit any more pins in England on that one. We've got all sorts of goodies. We've got a receipt of Colin Patterson in Hayes in the UK. And uh, what's this here? Uh, Sonic Print. Oh, that's who made the, the map, Sonic Print. A good, damn good job they did too. What else we got here? A letter from Colin. Hey Marty, how's things down under? Uh, just a restock for you. A map of the UK and some pins to keep you going with your geography lessons. Hope you can put them to good use. I sure will. That's it for now. Now you all take care. Best wishes, Colin. P.S. As it's Halloween, I've used this spooky font. Anyway, that's brilliant. And those pins will certainly come in handy for the new map. I'm quite excited about that. I'm going to save that one there. And put them over there on the map side of the room. That's over that side. I'll put the map over there too, seeing as that's the map side of the room. I've been extra specially good this year. Obviously I have, because Santa has dropped off this... He, he put his back out carrying this up the garden path and then climbing on the roof and wedging it down the chimney. Just wait for you to stop talking. So let's have a look at this one. It takes... It's a three-man lift. Uh, uh, I just want to put the bow, the bow, show me the, the bow. <laughs> There's a nice bow on there too. And I think this table's reached its safe working load. It could give at any moment. Okay, I'm going to get rid of Rudolph here <laughs> to make room for this unboxing. And I'm going to quickly shred all this open and open it up so I won't bore you with the opening process. Now, I forgot to mention that this is from my number one fan, and you all know her name. It's, who is it? Yes. <coughs> Claire Ravenwood from Ontario. And she never ceases to surprise me. And this one here must be a big, mega Christmas gift, I think. I think it could be like an AR-15 or something. Heavy enough. <gasps> Ooh. There's a lot of stuff in here. Holy moly. Have a look at this. Assorted package of goodies. I don't know where to start. Dear Marty, a big surprise box. Most items will be self-evident, I think. Should should be something for everyone in there. Special box for Mrs. Matchbox. Hope she likes it. I do have a creative side as well. Two items for your collection too. Pick them up at an auction. They were out of context. So got them for the price of an extra large Timmy's and donut. Still has an empty film cartridge. Oh. 
The spot putty should be better for the small imperfections on the castings than your regular putty. Try it, that is what it was made for. Big long lorry for Kevin. Mm, maybe start his own company. Big MM Trucking logo. Some new Matchbox cars, not old school, but in a hundred years they might be worth something. Best wishes to your family and many fans. Your number one fan, Claire Ravenwood. Well, thank you, Claire. This is an amazing, uh, amazingly generous package. I don't know where to start. There's something here for Mrs. Matchbox. It's a small package. Would you care to open that? Yes, please. All right, I'm going to move this over here to make some room because obviously I'm going to need it to pull all this stuff out. So having a look at these first, let's have a look. Some, some homemade jewellery by the looks of it. Ah, some beautiful things in there too. We've got some dangly earrings here that are all sparkly. I'll get them out and show you them. And we have like, oh it is, it's fool's gold. And it's iron pyrite, that's what they call it. See that? I remembered. And it's on a neck chain, so I'll show you that. This one here is beautiful, look at that. That's a piece of fool's gold right there. It looks great, doesn't it? Really looks like the real thing. I'll show you that one. This here is gold stone, which I've never heard of, but it looks gold and it looks like could possibly be some stone. <laughs> I'll show you that one. And this one here is tourmaline. So these must be some unusual rocks that occur in Canada. And it looks like Claire uh, is very crafty and has made it into some wearable pieces of jewellery. Unique, every one of them. So that's great. So I'm just going to pass these over to Julie and, and see what she thinks of them. There you go, Julie. What do you reckon about those? I think they're beautiful. Thank you so much, Claire. Right, I've got these three, four Matchbox models out to look at. What's this one here? Freightliner m 210 Six, as new, in the box, unopened. Have a look at that. We also have a 13 Ford Cargo, which we call over here Prime Mover. I think over in there, Canada, they call them tractors. And this one here is a 59 Chevy wagon with a canoe on the roof. I bet you that's a Canadian pastime. Canoeing up and down the river, uh, looking for beavers and what... Uh, what are those big things called with the antelope? Antelopes. Moose. <laughs> Antlers. Moose. Moose. We've had that discussion, haven't we? Mooses. And the last one here is a MBX. No, it's not. Matchbox, that stands for. Is it? Yeah. Uh, it's a 02 Audi RS6 Avanti. And it's like a station wagon, we call those over here. So they look really good. And as Claire says, in 100 years, is that... Was it 100 or was it 50? It's probably only 50 years. These would be worth something. So thank you. What's this? Is this a Christmas card? Shall I open it? Well, it is Christmas. Oh, and it is. It's a Meowy Christmas. <laughs> it's definitely a cat theme. There's always a bit of a, a cat thing happening. Wishing you and yours a perfect Christmas. Best wishes of 2020, Claire and Henry. Well, thank you. That's the first one. And that... I'm going to get like a piece of string across the fireplace and peg it up. And that will be the first one of the year. Thank you so much. How, how very thoughtful. Now, talking of thoughtful, look at what Kevin's got. This is a huge sized uh, tube of toothpaste for one. No, but a truck. Check this out. I can't get it. I haven't got enough hands. Check that baby out. That's not a baby, is it? It's a full grown up. Uh, there's nothing written on the back, so it's, uh, I can't really, oh, I can't see from here. It's a long haul trucker. Uh, I do like the idea of putting your own decals on that. It's got open, opening doors, and you can collect them all. I wonder how many there are. Kevin's going to be absolutely ecstatic when he sees that. Can't wait to see his little face light up for once in his life. <laughs> he doesn't get many toys. So that's awesome. I'll set that aside. I'm blown away. So heavy. Right, now getting back to this tube of toothpaste. Oh, it's not toothpaste. Silly me. It's a shame because I've got enough toothbrushes to, to work with that. Uh, it's a glazing and spot putty. It's called Dynatron. And it's obviously for filling holes. Uh, I think there's enough there to keep me going for the next hundred years. Bearing in mind the holes on a matchbox model are the size of a pinhead. 
So, <laughs> but hey, it's a new product and I'd love to, can't wait to try it out. Right, ah, customs have finally come to their senses and have put this back in the box. I think they've opened this up. They've seen who it's from and who it's for. They've realized the error of their ways and they've repacked the custard powder that they stole from me over a month ago. <laughs> I just want to say I got definitely better at cooking this and I had it the other night with some Swiss roll, you know, with the jam in it and it was absolutely beautiful. It reminded me of my childhood. My mother's favorite uh, dessert it was. Now, what have we got here? When I first saw this, I thought it was like an alien mask. You know, if you drew, you know, like out of the movie Alien. But it turns out there's two of them. And if I'm not mistaken, they are knife sharpeners. Well, they're good ones too. Look, they've got a rubber base. So they probably hold themselves down. And I could just do with one of these right this second. We've got two grades of sharpening. We've got the coarse here. Oh, feel that. That needed that. Oh. Oof. And then this is the fine polish in here. Now, I can't wait. These are brilliant. I can sharpen all my knives now without having to worry about which knife am I going to use next. I'm just going to test it on something. Julie, put your arm over here. <laughs> um, I know. This cardboard tube. Uh, look at that. Straight in and round. It's just like a completely new knife. <laughs> that's awesome. That's, that's brilliant. I can't wait. No, definitely. I'm going to get all my knives out now. Oh, that's blunt. Hang on. <laughs> Do I need to test it again? Oh. <laughs> now, what have we got here? We've got a couple of things. This is a multi-grip, multi-purpose grip pad for jar lid opening. Ah. That is a great idea, but not only that. Do you know what I've always wanted one of these for? I was thinking about it the other day. When I'm on the train and I want to have a nap, I put my elbow on the windowsill and it's curved because they don't want you to put your elbow on there for some reason. And uh, I've often thought, I've had one of those like draped over the side of the thing. I could just, my elbow would stick there and I could go to sleep like that. But these are great though for opening up cans and uh, there's probably a hundred uses for these things. I'm going to Google these. They're really good. No more struggling with lids on pots. Now, I must say, uh, Claire, you're always very thoughtful with your, your gifts. Um, now, I remember I mentioned about the cat thing. <laughs> cat trivia desk calendar. So let's have a look and just see what the first piece of cat trivia is. Trivia for uh, 2020. I know it's a little bit early, but right, let's have a look. Let's pretend it's 1st January. So that's the first piece of cat trivia. And it says, cats have more than 100 sounds in their vocal repertoire, and dogs have only about 10. So can you believe that? That is indeed a very interesting bit of cat trivia. And I thank you for enlightening me. I can't wait for the new year to come so I can find out more about cats. Right, now, what else have we got here? Oh, there's a lovely looking book in there uh, about flight lines, Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum, and a calendar for me, because I obviously, Claire obviously has picked up that I am a little bit of an aviation enthusiast. And this can go in my study, and I can use it to help me schedule my makeovers and, and things. I just wondered if they had the de Havilland chipmunk in here. The de Havilland chipmunk, I knew it would be there eventually. And what's so interesting about that is, well, when I was a kid in the Air Cadets in England, we used to go for air experience flights in that over Southampton and the Isle of Wight. And it was very fond memories of me. And just looking at that aircraft brings back memories. Now, I also noticed whilst I was looking that there is a note in here, and it is for October. This was like a gigantic matchbox makeover. I stripped this aircraft with my ex using five gallon pails of aircraft paint stripper brushes and plastic credit card size scrapers. It took about four to six weeks, but not every day. It is ready for flight now after 30 years and 27 since last run up. Wow, restoration was about 10 years. So Claire's had a hand in that, which is absolutely amazing. And it's, uh, it looks fantastic. Looks just like it's brand new out of the box. 
And here is a, another magazine, a small periodical, uh, regarding the Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum, which I shall take to bed later and have a cup of cocoa, and I shall read that, and find, should find it very interesting. Now, there's only a few more things in here. I'm leaving the best to last, maybe. Let's have a look here. We've got probably individually back packaged bars of chocolate. We've got uh, Marty's cameraman. Thanks for all you do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Claire. And we have Mrs. Matchbox. Enjoy. Thank you. She's not here. And uh, Marty's Matchbox Makeover Grandmaster. Let's have a look. I'm, I'm curious. I've just got to see what type of chocolate it is. Oh, it's beautiful. Cadbury's Dark Chocolate. Just what I like. Thank you very much, Claire. You know me. You know me better than I know myself. All right, and now two other objects in here. This is like the mother of all packages. Um, let's have a look here. This is a camera, obviously, in a leather case. Uh, I am running out of time today. I don't want to rush along. With... My battery's running low on my camera. Oh, a Bell & Howell. That's something I do not have. Bell & Howell Auto 35. Have a look at that. Uh, just give it a oh nice action and still fully functional which is awesome so that's something that I don't have you may have noticed behind me had a bit of a clean up with the cupboards moved everything around made a bit more space got rid of some junk and well now I can got room to put these other cameras in I'm sure I'm working on uh, a display for my models and uh, that will be revealed in a forthcoming video. Now, what is this one? Is this one of those? It is. It's another Polaroid Instamatic, which is quite amazing. How do these work? I don't even know. Here we go. Look at that. Wow, that looks as bright and as new as when it was first bought. It looks like it's had hardly any use, and I guess you can't buy these films anymore. Someone will correct me. But, uh, probably a hundred dollars each. But what an uh, what an amazing trip back uh, in time to look at that it actually brings back memories that the chipmunk the chocolate everything is just absolutely awesome so thank you so much Claire and well uh, that concludes this week's Christmas special unboxing sorry there wasn't more cars there will be next week and uh, it's just that people are sending me so much stuff these days it's all so diverse um, that I'm, I, I find it difficult to keep on top of it um, now all that's needed is to put pins in the map and I've got to go out tomorrow and buy a frame for that English map so I won't be putting in Colin Patterson's uh, pin until next week when I've got the map framed okay so I hope you understand so I'm going to do that now okay first pin for this evening's uh, map section of the video is for Mark Brown Brooklyn in Michigan uh, that is a right about here by my reckoning. That's yours Mark. Thank you Second pin is this green one mm. oh. And this is for Mike and Nikki Pumphrey from Westminster in Maryland and I believe that to be approximately there That's yours there Mike and Nikki Pumphrey Thank you our third pin is this lovely luxury length white pin from Mrs. Marsha Riggs in Santa, South Carolina. And she's thankfully given me this map to make my job easy and therefore I believe it to be eek there. What a long pin that is. That's going to stand out amongst the rest. Now, fourth pin today is for Claire Ravenwood. It's getting pretty crowded up there in Vineland, Ontario. But I'll give it my best shot. Here we go. Quite a cluster there. And the only other one to go is Colin Patterson in Hayes in the UK. Well, as we showed you before, the UK is chockers. So uh, I shall be doing that next week when I've finished uh, mounting my map of the UK. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it, very interesting video, and I shall be back again with some more Matchbox makeovers very soon. Till then, goodbye.